All right. After spending some time um, in the British Isles doing some fun driving uh, with Assetto Corsa, I thought it'd be nice to bring it back a little closer to home so I could actually drive with live because it isn't quite uh, completely sundown, isn't dark yet, but it's still kind of a nice time to drive. Uh, it's dusk on the West Coast. Um, this is Mulholland Drive um, in Assetto Corsa, and uh, I'm using a uh, little bit of a traffic tool. Um, that I'll provide a link to for the traffic for this, um, just for the experimentation side of it. And uh, let's uh, give Mulholland Drive a, a little bit of a go here. This is laid up a lot like a hill climb with a start and finish line. Kind of cool. Set it with a very small uh, number of cars, but I'm not seeing them, and I'm not really sure. We may be driving this without the cars tonight. I think that this is only like 13 miles. I have to double check that, but. Uh Oh, no, there are cars. Cool. So they're just going to surprise us when they show up. So, again, pretty new uh, release, this Mulholland Drive, um, relatively speaking, and uh, looks really pretty on the screen, and uh, definitely is a hoot to drive. I have driven this before, because um, when I got it, I, I couldn't resist uh, taking this drive, because I've driven this in real life, of course not quite at this pace. is between I think like the 405 and the 101 it's not the freeway the Mulholland freeway it's Mulholland Drive proper a wheel there in the gravel for a sec. I need to tinker with my pure settings because I'm not 100% happy with uh, the way like tail lights bounce around. You see all that light reflection there? And I actually, it behaves, uh, this this particular traffic uh, mod, it's uh, Lua based, I think it's called 2Play, that's right. I, every time I, I almost say that, I feel like I should correct myself because it feels wrong, but I think that that's what it's called. It's a Lua script and some other odds and ends to create traffic um, on these maps. and. Uh, supposedly it simplifies the, the process a little bit of adding AI to tracks, but one of the kind of more recent features of this is a police option where you can actually uh, set basic a police chase, <laughs> which if you've ever been chased by the police, you'd know that isn't as much fun as it sounds, but, and I'm not admitting to anything here, but the reason why I bring that up is that I played in that mode for just a brief second just to see what it was about. And uh, the way that the lights randomly flash red 
actually looks a lot like the uh, police lights when they come on because you see them kind of encompassing you as you're going around. Which is, it's kind of cool. But um, but that's what that bright light flashing because right there that happened and there is no car around. So there is again, there's a cop. Hi, cop. He's behind the barrier so he won't chase us. Um... Yeah, it looks like a police sort of thing, even though there's no police behind me. A confusing turn. We're not quite half done with the... or we're just a little over halfway, I guess. I don't think there's a cop behind me. <laughs> hey, I hear no sirens. I don't know, maybe I have something turned on that's actually putting those lights on. If a cop would pull me over? I, I don't know, that's just a weird thing though. A great time of day to drive, though. It reminds me of a trip I took to San Diego um, probably 10 years ago now, maybe a little more. And uh, I was down there for work, and I chose to drive the Porsche down, um, all the way down five, and then spent two weeks in San Diego, uh, stayed in La Jolla, and uh, did all sorts of fun stuff. I went on some driving tours and uh, cruised around uh, and some of the roads in Southern California are just a lot of fun and the weather is just beautiful so you'd have like crystal clear days or crystal clear nights and you roll the windows down on the car and just enjoy the ride, you know. Absolutely enjoyed <laughs> the drives down there. Actually enjoyed the drive going down there uh, as well. Um, five is one of those weird roads that it's very desolate. There's not a much, lot out there, not much to see. But uh. It can be fun. Um, there are some nice stretches where you can have a little bit of fun. Although the majority of uh, the road is uh, slow trucks passing slower trucks, which can be dangerous because some of those trucks out there are driving, it can take, you know, half mile or more for one of them to pass another one. So if you're coming up and not paying attention, you can find yourself in quite a pickle. It's funny, is like I, I was thinking about that the other day. When I was a kid, truck drivers, man, were revered as you know being some of the best drivers on the road. And you know, you would uh, signal them, you know, uh, to let them know when they had space, and they'd thank you by blinking their headlights and. You know, you pass them, or you were a kid, you can, you know, do the whole, you know, thing, and they'd, uh, you know, do their horn, and, you know, it's just kind of cool, right? And you don't see that today as much. Uh, in fact, I see truck drivers 
doing some pretty silly things out on the roads. And I definitely, uh... don't see as much common courtesy on the road. One of the things that uh, Porsche owners used to do all the time was when you'd see another Porsche, you'd flash your headlights, you know, and just, you know, say hey, and, you know, acknowledge one another. And see. None of that anymore. You very rarely see that. There are some old timers that still respect that. Kurt, I love you. Um, but most just drive their cars and ignore other drivers on the road and don't really have that kind of, uh, I don't know, they don't have fun driving. I, I, that, and that's what it really gets down to, right, is if you're part of the car culture, part of that is enjoying the experience and sharing it with the other drivers on the road, um, not doing things that are ridiculously stupid and putting people's lives at risk, but at the same time, you know, enjoying the experience. Uh, it's a big part of of the american dream uh slice of a american pie as it were to you know do road trips and be on the road and see you know trucks and other cars other families um and i don't know that everybody's so so focused on getting to where they're going or being in their own little world as they do it that you know nobody has fun anymore on the road I always wanted to cruise Route 66. Of course, that's a hard thing to do. Although, uh, two of my friends, love you, Mike and Craig, um, did exactly that, uh, going to a Porsche parade as they drove across the country and uh, drove on what remains of Route 66 and then the connectors that connect those sections of road together. And uh, I've always wanted to do that too. Um, so that used to be, you know, it, right? You know, Route 66, they, you know, wrote damn songs about it. And, uh... Drive through, and you'd visit these little towns. They have little diners or little shops to get your car fixed or, you know, whatever. And that is the finish. And you can turn around and go back the other way. And I don't know. I don't know if that's cheesy or... Oh, much. Um, <laughs> there are a lot of people that don't like being in cars. I always did as a kid. As a kid, my, uh, father had a 1955 Chevy Bel Air and it did not have a passenger seat. He had a bucket seat as a driver's seat and he had the the back seat. And uh, so we go on long trips. For whatever reason we went on long trips when I was a kid and I don't really know why. Um, just he and I, you know, traveling cross country in that 55 he uh, I'd fall asleep in the back seat and you know, we'd drive and, I don't know, saw a lot of the country through the back window of a 55 Chevy Bel Air. Also had a really weird experience where the uh, left rear tire came off the car while we were driving down the road, so saw that um, also uh, through that same window. That was kind of a scary experience. That car, I don't know, it's really weird. and. Again, childhood memories were weird, but I do know that wheel came off, and the car did not grind. It stayed balanced on the three wheels until we could get it safely stopped. Of course, when we stopped it, it kind of dropped down. The 
father was kind of uh, like that uh, that dad and the Christmas story in terms of you know would drive like you know bald tires and you know would drive them until the cords were bleeding through and you were risking you know mayhem on the tires and uh <laughs> so he was always time changing he always had like two or three tires in the trunk of that car and he had his tools sitting in uh the where the passenger seat was he just had a uh, uh, tool chest and a jack thumb sword and stuff just sort of sitting there where passenger would normally sit for the front seat weird memories car was pretty quick too it was a uh, re-speed column shift um, and my father fancied himself uh, being uh, a bit of a mechanic and the car had a 283 no 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 that's wrong originally had a 283 but uh he had uh taken the crank out of the 283 and had uh put a uh 327 or a 350 in it and put the crank in it um so it spooled faster, um, and uh, he did some other weird things. He had a hot cam in it, of course, and uh, I think he had uh, different variations. Like I think at one point he had uh, trip deuces, uh, three two-barrel carburetors on it, and then uh, at other times he had a four-barrel car, a big Holly double pumper. The car could scoot. The car was really fast. Always wonder why he had to sell that car. He sold it in Texas in like uh, 1978. The car would be worth some money now. It was uh, kind of that, that weird uh, pink primer color. The whole car. Body was straight. He never painted it. Had uh, plain black painted uh, wheels. No hubcaps. And he didn't drive white walls. He always uh, turned the tires around and had the black walls facing out. Always thought someday I might actually get uh, get a '55 Chevy similar and uh, restore it. It was a, a '55 Bel Air with a post in the rear windows. So some of the Bel Airs, like the 210s, I think um, th there's no post. Uh, the rear view or the rear um, windows and the uh, passenger windows, the door windows, rise up and meet. And connect with one another with this you know plate whereas uh the post you actually get like a frame um and uh makes for a stiffer stiffer ride Which I always thought was better. Lost there for a second, couldn't see the road. that car 
we came out here to California, we had a 68 Chevelle with a 350 in it. And that car, that car was so hot, it could literally smoke the tires, smoke the tires off of it, like, like, like rip them apart, thread them, you know, shred them. Fun car. Remember, my mom used to drive that car. And my mom, my mom, my mom, the, uh, she used to drag race. And so she knew how to drive a car. So periodically, you know, she'd you know, pull up to a light and this young kid, you know, would hear the car, you know, loping because it was, it was obviously hot. And they'd look over and they see this little tiny, she was like five, five, weighed 90 pounds if she was dripping wet. <laughs> and they'd look over and see this little tiny old lady behind the, the wheel and was like, what the hell? And she'd jump off the line smoke the tires and just leave them. That is pretty funny. I grew up with a love of cars, as you might imagine. And an appreciation for, for good drivers. Remember my mom teaching me to drive and it was weird because I'm, you know, I'm been watching, you know, good drivers my entire life, and I'm, you know, driving along, and and she just all of a sudden like screams at the top of her lungs and hits me square in the middle of the chest, and I'm all like, what? It's all like just, you know, in an emergency situation, I just wanted to see what you'd do. I'm like, are you nuts? <laughs> That's my mom. funny. She hated having to give up driving. My mom was sick. So by the time I was about 13, she really, her vision didn't allow her to drive anymore. So uh, I was able to get early uh, permission to drive her. As long as she was in the car, I was able to drive her to doctor's appointments and things starting when I was 13. At that time, we had a much more mild-mannered car um, that she and I were driving around in. 1976 Dodge Aspen. The car was just terrifying. It being so boring. You've seen the bo both sides of water now. Mulholland Drive. Actually a decent drive.
So what'd you think? Not bad, huh? A lot of fun. Um, and again, with uh, the traffic, I'll put the links to the traffic and to uh, the uh, the mod, uh, the track, Mulholland Drive. And uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for joining me. I do appreciate it. Spaß machen Sport.